Well, good morning, everybody. I've lived 65 years, so I've went through a lot of things. And here I'm standing, a guy that grew up with oxen, to talk about drones and all these insurance things. First of all, allow me to say thank you to Sean and his wife, Avril. Thank you so much for arranging this. Allow me to also thank my, my wonderful company, uh, Kerry and, and uh, Ricardo, that is here. The guys at home, the Fricky and, and Pierre and uh, Francis and uh, Quinton, those are the guys that are sitting behind me to be able to stand here and do this presentation. Before I'm going to sit on that red chair, I'm going to ask you a question. Anybody in this room here that doesn't have a license to drive a car? Please show me your hand, please. Anybody? No. Anybody that doesn't have an ID? Not an idea, but an ID. Okay. I know that I'm talking to a very learned crowd here this morning. But my job is, oh yeah, that's the last question that I have for the panel. <clears throat> Anybody lost a drone? Had an accident with a drone? Come on. Please leave the room. I don't want to insure you. <laughs> it's great, guys. We're gonna have a, it's going to be a relaxed atmosphere because I'm going to talk about something that I think everybody understands. When all this technical jargon has been said, and all the losses and all the thanks for the loss of words too. But when all these, all the, the acronyms have been passed, somebody will pay for your losses. And at this stage, my company has started to develop the drone insurance policy in 2014 already. We are now in 2018. The reason? This business is evolving. And I understand that some of you want already the fastest drone that can go 400 kilometers and 4,000 kilometers. Hang on, there's still some of us just trying to get it out of the box. And some of us are also following the trends as it goes. So here we go. This is my presentation. I'm from Ocust Insurance Company. And I want to show you a short video, which I missed now. And I think it is here on this, on the laptop. The future of aviation has completely changed. We're at a point in technology where the possibilities are endless. Drones are changing the face of how we do business. What are drones now? What will drones be in the future? What about drone regulations, liability, safety? Do you know what this means for the insurance industry? The old aviation is gone. The opportunity for exponential growth is knocking on our front door. The question is, are you ready for the drone explosion? Right, anybody recognize their drones flying around there? If I haven't had your permission, sorry. But that's what we did. Okay, can anybody uh, tell me what the three things are that you saw there, the three names that came out? Three things that was printed all over the screen. Anybody? Yeah. DJI. DJI, thank you. You saw your drone there. Anybody saw anything? <laughs> Say? No, 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 no. Ah, somebody was watching. Somebody's listening in the class. The first one was regulation. You heard everything about regulation. The second one is safety. The third one is liability. Why are we hammering on this? Well, <clears throat> I was very privileged. I also had an aircraft. I have sat 6,000 hours in a cockpit of an aircraft. I know what it feels like when a Boeing is flying at the lowest, at the wrong altitude and it goes in front of you and that weight takes that little King Air C-90 and it, I tell you what, it's a rock and roll there. So what are we trying to do? We're not trying to change anything. CAA, Mr. Sehuawe, thank you for the rules and the regulations. 
embrace it. I'm asking you to embrace the rules. Anybody here have children? Please put up your hand. Come on. You have children? Okay. So what are you going to do when that drone flies into your child on the beach where I live? This is aviation law. It is not short-term insurance law. It is not civil law. When you come into aviation law, as far as we are concerned, anything that moves from the ground upwards is in the air. And if you are in the air, then we abide by the aviation regulations. The reason why my manned aircraft is doing so well as far as safety is concerned is there are regulations. Now, if you don't want to be, be following the regulations, then guess what? You don't get a PPL. You don't get a CPL. You don't get a LDP. You don't get nothing. So, what happens effect, effectively is this is what happens. A more power pole, a pine tree, missing needles, and a piece of what used to be a power line can be found off of Northeast 12th and Eastern and more. It's the result of a fire caused by a drone. This is how it looked afterward. Most of it melted. The way this was being flown definitely wasn't safe. It's a busy intersection with lots of power lines. The drone crashed into them. The lights snapped off and hit cars that were parked in the Walgreens parking lot and even knocked out power. After looking at the video that, that we got off this drone, this person obviously didn't know all the rules. They, they were violating a lot of different rules. Although more police didn't say who was flying, they handed the video from the drone over to the U.S. Department of Transportation for possible federal charges. It's this type of case why more police say you should never fly your drone, your power lines, or any traffic. Instead, they recommend you fly your drone in an open area, like a park. If it does fall out of the sky, it's not going to strike somebody or cause a car crash or, or damage the property. In more, Brett KOCO 5 News. Okay, that was one. Now, I want to ask you this next question is, if, they, if you are involved in a drone accident, who do you think is going to investigate that? The South African police? No, my friend. You're going to have the CAA on your back. Why? Because it's an aviation situation. So here's another one. You guys that are going to weddings and enjoy a wedding, well, let's see what happens at this wedding. That's pretty great. Is up. Oh, sorry. Go, ma'am. This wedding was supposed to be the best day of his life, but for one room in New Hampshire, it's turned into a nightmare for him and his family. Nick Giovanni from our station WBZ in Boston has more on an incident that brings new meaning to the term wedding crasher. <laughs> Music pumping, guests dancing, and a drone moving overhead. This was the scene in Searles Castle in Wyndham, captured on cell phone video at a wedding reception back in August. Both the groom and the venue are now being sued by two of the wedding guests for negligence for what allegedly happened within seconds of this footage being recorded. According to a lawsuit filed last month, the drone came crashing down, hitting one woman in the face, fracturing her nose, and causing a concussion. The suit claims the drone's propeller hit another woman's head, leaving her with a concussion and a laceration that required more than 20 stitches. One of my waiters came running into the castle on a panic, saying the drone is inside the tent, the room's flying it under the tent. So we went out to tell him, you know, you can't do it, you have to put it away, and it was too late. Scott C. Robb II is the VP of Searles Castle and was overseeing the event. He and the lawsuit both claimed the groom, Barry Billcliffe, was the person at the controls. Hours after he says, he told Billcliffe to put the drone away. The groom came up about two hours before the wedding, and, uh, took the drone out of his car and launched it into the courtyard. He was flying around taking some pictures, and I told him it was illegal, and he can't fly those here, I explained why, um, and he said okay, and put it away. Rob believes the two guests should be compensated, but he argues Searles Castle shouldn't be held responsible. I don't know how I could have prevented it. I mean, I thought by telling him it's illegal, you can't do this here, and he put it away, that's, you know, end of story. The groom declined an on-camera interview, but told WBZ he was not controlling the drone. He claims he was standing in the middle of the dance floor at the time. Okay, so what, so what happened there? Instead of having a honeymoon, he might have spent a night in jail. So this is happening. It's not that it's not happening in South Africa, it's just that we don't know about it yet. So one of the things that we did is we categorized our drone users into three categories. Quickly, very, I'm going to go very briefly through this. 
We got professional users. If you earn money, you're there. Semi-professional, you're on a farm, you're an, an architect, you're a landscaper, you're under the semi-professionals. Recreational, we're looking at the re recreational, we want to do the recreational, but you're using it purely for yourself, and we're making a distinction under recreational between carrying a camera and not carrying a camera. But I saw yesterday a little thing that fits in my hand that is a weapon of mass destruction. So I'm not so sure which one is now the worst to have. Uh, we're looking at whole third-party liabilities accessories. These are the, this is the components that we're insuring as well as, as uh, war risks. Then we're looking at the minimums that we're looking at, the, whole ins the sum insured is we're looking at 10,000 upwards. We can give you up to 2 million rand cover. We're looking at liability between 2.5 million and up to 5 million. We're looking at extras up to 250,000 rand per item or a million rand in total. And we're not insuring a drone older than three years. Why? Because the things are going so fast out of, ma out of market that we, we're hoping to get space for the ones that we're insuring. <clears throat> so what is covered? Loss of use to the damage to the hull, use of the drone, the professional use will be applicable if the drone is used by any trade or commercial. I'm just going to go briefly through this because you guys actually know more than what I do about drones. But what I do know something about is people. And I know that this drone, because all the manufacturers of drones are telling me that this is safe. And I'm telling you that the people that are flying them are not safe. Why? Because in real flying, we have a saying that says, attitude, not aptitude, gives you altitude. And that's what one of the things that we find amongst the drone users are the attitude is wrong. So we also want to try from our part to try and help them with this. This is the underwriting criteria for the owners. You know that. I'm not going to go through that again. But what I want to do is I also want to just quickly go to the situation of what we are trying to do pertaining to um, how do you qualify a person that is flying for recreation? What are you going to do with him? And one of the things that we want to do is, I'm going too fast through this, but let me talk about it. One of the things that we want them to do is we want them to go to the ATC in their area to say, here I am, I'm going to fly a drone in this area. We want them to go to the municipality. We want them to get a letter from the municipality to say, I'm flying in this area. Why? Because the moment that drone starts next door and starts flying up and down in the street, somebody's going to phone the municipality. They want to know who, who's, who's checking on who now. Who's flying around here and where did he get permission from? So those are important things to us. The other thing that is important for us, if you're flying a, a recreational uh, a drone, we want you to have a fire extinguisher. We want you to have some sort of a medical kit with you. Why? Because you're going to be the first person there on the scene when you fly into somebody. Now, I am supposed to talk about risk management, but you cannot talk about risk management unless you understand risk assessment. So risk assessment is, you cannot tell me, Peter, I want to insure a white drone for 100,000 Rand. Please insure it. It's not going to work. We want to know how tall you are, where you are from, where you're coming from, where you're going from, who, did, who trained you, what license have you got, where did you get it, why did you get it. We want to know these things. Why? Because when all is said and done, we want to make sure that everybody gets the right rate, the right insurance, so that you can go out there and know that when your drone goes down, you're going to get paid out. Contrary to popular belief, insurance companies, we have a very simple uh, accounting system. So on the left-hand side, we get income. On the right hand side, we get expenses. The income must be more than the expenses. If it's the other way around, we're in a loss. Anybody here working for a company that's in a loss? You can talk to me afterwards, we can ensure that too. But here is the thing. We're not insuring drones only. We're insuring the whole spectrum. From your manufacturer, products liabilities, we're going through liabilities, we're going through buildings. We're going, there's so much synergy going on in this room. If you don't walk away from this drone con, with a lot of people that can help you, then I'm not sure that you came to the right place. I have met up with people here that can make this drone insurance business for us a very, very viable business. I thank you for your time, and thank you very much for listening.